What we're talking about, remember, is where pollutants come from. We recognize that they come from human activity, um, namely the combustion of fossil fuels. And so what we've been looking at in the last uh, segment was just, you know, what exactly does that word combustion mean? And we looked at some examples of some combustion reactions and um, reminded ourselves as the importance of balancing um, those chemical reactions. Okay, so by now, you really should have for sure um, done that Pogel activity and done a little bit of practice um, with balancing these chemical reactions. And so here's, here's a, a test for you. If, if somebody asked or told you this um, particular, these words, could you write a chemical equation uh, with state symbols? Now, um, the, the, the words are solid sodium plus liquid water react to yield hydrogen gas plus a solution of sodium hydroxide and heat. Write this chemical equation with state symbols. Okay, now state symbols I've not brought up to you before, but remember, um, uh, matter can exist as a solid, liquid, or gas, and we say that's the state of the matter. So a state symbol, sometimes it's important to know, you know exactly what state your, um, your reactants or products are in, and so sometimes we'll use symbols. And the symbols we use are a lowercase uh, g for gas, a little cursive l for liquid, and a lowercase s for solid um, to indicate that those uh, reactants and products are in those particular states. There's one more state, and we'll talk more about this particular state at the, um, actually not until next semester, but it's AQ, which stands for aqueous, which means it's dissolved in water. Okay, so um, given that information, um, why don't you try to, in your small groups, um, uh, write out the answer for this one. And if you want to, you can turn off the video and give it a try before I actually write down the correct answer for you. Okay, solid sodium, you need to know that sodium is an element, and solid means, you know, you can indicate it's solid with a little s next to it, the state symbol s, plus, that means it reacts with liquid water, that means water's in the liquid phase, or state, to yield means, that's where you put the arrow, means gives, or that's the result of the reaction, Hydrogen gas, you have to remember that when you write hydrogen, it always exists, it's a diatomic um, molecule, so you have to write H2, not just H, and it's in the form of a gas, plus a solution of sodium hydroxide, and since this all happened in water, I know it's an aqueous solution, so that means my sodium, and you have to be able to write down sodium hydroxide, because you learned um, that um, polyatomic anion, the hydroxide anion, has a minus one charge. So to write it down, it's NaOH, and it's, since it's dissolved, we're going to say aqueous, um, and heat. Sometimes in a chemical reaction, we will add if it takes heat to make it go or if heat's given off. All right, and so in that case, we just wrote down heat as a product because heat is given off in this particular case. All right. So once, once you correctly write down all of the parts, or excuse me, all of the components, the elements of the compounds, then you have to take a step back and look at it and ask yourself, um, does it follow the law of conservation of matter? That is, is it balanced? And so you just go through, um, you know, and look, okay, sodium, sodium, one sodium, one sodium. If you want to, you can draw little circles if that helps you, you know, the little spheres, if that helps you model it. I and mean, if not, you can just recognize this. There's one sodium here and there's one sodium there. There's one oxygen here, there's one oxygen there. Um, there's, on the left-hand side of the equation, there's a total of one, two hydrogens. And over here, there's a total of one, two, three. So everything is balanced here as written except for the hydrogen, so we're gonna have to fix that. And so to fix that, I can um, look at my, um, if I have, let's see, I have three on this side, that's sort of a pain because it's an odd number. So the only thing I can do over here to get more hydrogens is to put a coefficient in front of the water because it's the only place where the uh, hydrogen exists. So I'll start by just trying to put a two there. Um, start with the smallest whole number and just work your way up until you get things balanced. And in this case, that's called balancing by inspection. It's just sort of back and forth. I have four hydrogens here and I have uh, three over here now. But if I put a two in front of the sodium hydroxide, I can get myself up to four hydrogens. One, two, because there's, remember, two whole units of this. So there's one, two hydrogens plus two hydrogens here. That's four. And then there's um, 
two you know, molecules of this that's a total of four hydrogens. So that's worked out nicely, but I've messed everything else up because I put a two in front of the sodium hydroxide. So to fix that now, I can go back and put a two in front of the sodium. Now that's balanced. And let me see, is everything else in order? I believe so, because the oxygen here, there was two now because of that coefficient. There's two there, four. Yes, everything is balanced. So that's an example of sort of what I'd like you to be able to do is, um, is balance that. Now for the sodium hydroxide, when you're, when you're um, balancing, remember you can always look at a periodic table. If you couldn't remember, you know, hydroxide you just have to memorize that has a minus one charge. But for the sodium, remember, you can find it on the periodic table, see that it's in group one, and know that it's going to carry a plus one charge. And that helps you know how to write the formula for this ionic compound, sodium hydroxide. All right? Okay, so I'd like to just give you another opportunity to practice writing and balancing reactions. Um, again, it's given in words. You have to be able to write the compounds and balance the reactions. Mercury 2 oxide decomposes into its elements. All right, so you have to know what that word decompose means. Uh, it's a type of chemical reaction where it breaks down into its elements. Well, what are the elements that make up mercury uh, 2 oxide? Just mercury. So I know it's just going to be mercury and oxygen on the right-hand side because those are the way we write those two elements. Mercury 2 oxide, how do I write that? Well, you can find oxygen on the periodic table. It's in group 6. That means it's going to carry as an anion a 2 minus charge. And then um, mercury is a transition metal. So it's hard to tell you know, what the charge on it's going to be just by looking at the periodic table. So you can, um, let me see, mercury's right here. So that's why there's this uh, Roman numeral. It tells you the charge is plus 2. So since it's plus 2 from the mercury and minus 2 from the oxide, then I can write it just like that. And then um, once you write it, you have to take, once you write everything down correctly, then you balance it and you see that the 2 oxygen and only 1 over here. So if I put a 2 out front, well, I messed that up, so I just need to put a 2 out front of the, of the mercury, and now I have a balanced equation. All right, I want you guys to be able to do this. Um, iron combines with oxygen to yield iron 3 oxide. What type of reaction do you think that is? It's something combining with oxygen. It's an element combining with oxygen. That's an example of a combustion reaction. It's also uh, it's a type of synthesis reaction called a combustion reaction. All right. Um, so I'd like for you to be able to do this. Work in your groups. See if you can do it. This is a good chance to check yourself to see um, you know, how much you remember from chemistry last year or the year before and how much work you need to do to catch up. Um, iron, you know, it's a common uh, element. The symbol I would expect you know is, is Fe. Combines with oxygen, diatomic element, to yield iron 3 oxide. Again, this is a, um, a transition metal. The 3 indicates that this particular iron is in this particular ionic compound is carrying a plus 3 charge. That's what that Roman numeral tells me. And so from that, I can figure out the formula of iron 3 oxide based on the charges of the oxide, which would be a minus 2, and the iron in this case would be a plus 3. So to get a neutral um, compound, I'm going to have to have um, two irons for every three oxygen in that particular compound. Okay. Again, after you write down everything correctly, then you look to see if you can balance it or if it needs to be balanced. In this case, it does. Um, we have three, an odd number of oxygens here and an even, so in order to get that fixed, I'm going to have to put a three here and a two here. And when I do that, that, that gives me a total of how many iron here? That gives me a total of four iron, so I'm going to have to put a four right there. It's balanced. All right, now here's another example I, I would expect you could do by now. You should have memorized the formula for methane. That's one of the common alkanes. Burns in oxygen to give carbon dioxide and water. This is a classic hydrocarbon combustion reaction. Um, and these classic hydrocarbon combustion reactions, this is a hydrocarbon, remember, um, because you memorized that. And burns in oxygen, you know that. To give carbon dioxide, you can figure out the formula of that based on the name and water everybody knows is H2O. So you can write everything down. The thing I, I want to tell you now is this is a combustion reaction. And when you have a hydrocarbon combustion reaction, the products are always 
carbon dioxide and water. Sometimes you can also have some carbon monoxide mixed in if you have a limited supply of oxygen. Okay, so similar to the case before, if you have a limited supply of oxygen, you could form carbon monoxide. But in, unless somebody tells you different, you always assume that the products are carbon dioxide and water. And in a big mess of it, if you've got a lot of you know, fuel, um, you can sometimes end up with also some carbon monoxide. We'll look at that um, a little bit closer here in a couple minutes. But for now, you should just be able to write it down and balance it so you can recognize this is a combustion reaction. The product of combusting an alkane, a hydrocarbon, with oxygen gives um, carbon dioxide and water. Okay, and so I'll balance this. You should try to do it yourself.